Hello and welcome back, and that is right, earlier this week Johnsbo revealed the new Johnsbo N4 enclosure, their new NAS enclosure, and I think it would be fair to say that in the world of DIY and custom NAS enclosures, Johnsbo are something of a big deal. We talked about it on the channel quite a lot in the last 12 months or so, but John, the Johnsbo N4 case I think is going to split opinion quite a lot, because rather than what we've seen up to this point with the N1, N2 and N3 enclosures like the N2 and the N3 we have here on the table, the N4, I wouldn't really call a massive upgrade. It's actually kind of a side grade because it does bring some very unique elements to the fold, but at the same time, it has seemingly rolled back some of the things that I really loved about the Johnsbo N3. And in this video, we're going to talk about the N4. We're going to hop over to the laptop in just a moment, and we're going to talk about its strengths, its weaknesses, how it compares against the Johnsbo N2 and N3, and ultimately whether this is going to be the NAS case for you. But let's talk about the things that we like about it, okay? So there you go, that is what the Johnsbo N4 looks like. And for those of you that have followed this channel for a while, and even in the world of DIY network attached storage enclosures, you're probably getting serious odd heat vibes. This is a case that we talked about in the closing stages of last year. This was an 8-bay device that's got that sort of faux-ish wooden panel there on the front. It has 8 bays of storage there, all of which are 3.5 inch, and it's got the cooling factions there on the back. But the thing that made this case stand out and why we recommended it last year was its support of MATX, not just ITX and that is something that the John's Bow N4 is also bringing to the fold supporting both ITX and MATX motherboards now for those aren't aware and we can bring this image up on here MITX boards the one here in the middle in the green are traditionally picked because they are very compact here's an MITX board there and it allows you to have a much smaller system and because of the improvements in a soft uh, system on chip or SOC mobile CPUs, it means you can get away with much smaller components. But traditionally MIT exports, for the most part, or no, not always, tend to have much fewer SATA connectors. Also, they tend to arrive with only one PCIe upgrade slot. MIT exports, on the other hand, not only allow for more space for physical SATA connections rather than utilizing SAS fanout, but on top of that, often can have two or even three PCIe upgrade slots on there, as you can see from the MATX board there on the side. And when we look at the Johnsbo N4, we look at some of the images there of the rear, we can clearly make out that this system now is going to support four PCIe upgrade slots. More on that later on. Now, this is something that definitely overshadows that of the uh, N3, which has a dual PCIe architecture on the rear. So um, you have up to two slots there that you can occupy, but you may notice a slight improvement there on the older generation device than the newer. But nonetheless, you can see that you can get a dual length there. Now, traditionally, because it's ITX only on the N3 series one, it means that on the rear of this box, yes, you're going to put a card in there, but it's only going to be a single PCIe lane on that ITX board. And resulting, it's going to be a dual depth card there like a graphics card so that means that even though it's got two slots in the majority of cases you're only going to be installing one card in there and it gets even worse when we look at the john's Pro n2 and i say worse it's all relative to how you're going to use it when we see that this one here only had a single card depth length there but you may have already noticed it why 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 delilah is it half height yes we can put uh two double length uh double uh, height card uh, double thickness cards in there but for some reason, they've opted for, on the Johnsbo N4, to go for half-height cards. And if you are going to go down the road of using graphics cards, that's going to severely limit the depth of the cards that you can use inside the N4. So, for example, that's a half-depth 10GBE combo card from QNAP there. That would go inside this case an absolute treat. But if we were looking at chunkier graphics cards, or even higher-depth storage upgrade cards, a majority of these cards are full height so they would go inside the likes of the john's boat n3 here but they wouldn't go inside the n2 and it wouldn't go inside the n4 either so i think that's really important for those that are looking at those four slots and thinking yay mitx support keep in mind that if you're going to put cards inside this they're going to have to be half height there and something else you may have noticed about this and i know it seems like i'm being very very negative but it's very very important is the height of the top of the chassis anyway and when we look at the height of the chassis i'm going to remove the white one there because it's exactly the same if we go into uh the rear panel there of the john's bow n3 and get that there on screen and the same goes with the john's bow n2 you may notice that much like the john's bow n2 the john's bow n3 is half height across the whole field of it. Now, not only does that mean it's gonna impact the PCIe card you slot inside, but 
it's going to impact the CPU fan, the cooler that you're going to install inside. So this, for example, is our um, Erying i9 13th generation upgrade that we did for a video, uh, I think, a month and a half ago. And this inside here needed this much bigger cooler to keep things lovely and cool to its quite dense PSU. This would never fit inside the John's Bow N2. It would fit in the N3 because we have that extra room for that PCI, um, for all the CPU cooler going up to a potential height of 130 millimeters. Whereas in the case of the John's Bow N4, you only have 70 millimeters to play with. Now, if you are going to be using much smaller form factor CPU coolers, such as those arriving with the N305 or the N100 series, or even some of the uh, Intel Celeron and Pentium processors that are arriving in some of the top tens, you're gonna be absolutely fine if you're gonna use a CPU like that AMD one we were talking about last Friday, where that AMD uh, Ryzen 7 processor there, which arrives with that John Bow low profile one, you're gonna be absolutely fine there in terms of that CPU cooler. But just keep in mind that when you do go for the Johnson M4, you have got less room to play with up there. Now, when it comes to storage, the Johnspo N4 has sort of broken a tradition we've seen long term with the brand. When the Johnspo N1 arrived in the scene years ago, it was a simple two bay device. And then when the Johnspo N2 arrived, it was a five bay going into the Johnspo N3, which was an eight bay, and then finally ending on this, the Johnspo N4 which is a six bay device. It's got six SATA 3.5 inch bays. And of course it has two 2.5 inch SATA bays there, but it has to be added that even though I'm saying it's a six slash eight bay device, we also have to highlight that this device here also supported a couple of 2.5 inch SATA drives inside. And even the Johns Bowen two support at least one SATA 2.5 inch drive inside. So it was kind of an odd choice by the brand in terms of storage. And I will add, if we go through the images there, that not only are they still utilizing those rubber pulls that we've seen utilized in the John's Bow series, something I've never really been a tremendous fan of there, but on top of that, the SATA bays at the front, at the very least, are SATA injected. So they don't even have uh, the rubber pull there. What they're doing is to immediately inject it into, with, via hot swapping, a SATA 2.5 inch adapter bay there. So on the one hand, I like that the SATAs are just whoosh, straight in. And for those of you working in content creation, perhaps using some particularly high def cameras with direct injection methods via U.2 or SATA into the camera bay, I would still say, one, I kind of wish they ditched those, particularly when you look at that Ordheed, which has actual physical bays inside. But on top of that, this six bay, it seems quite odd because we gain the M80X support there, which means greater network performance card in there, along with better storage potential via SATA ports on M80X boards. But then we're still limited to those six SATA 3.5 inch bays. And I was kind of hoping the M4 would at least be maybe an eight SATA 3.5 and maybe four 2.5 inch there to give us a kind of hybrid 12 bay. It's not bad per se. I just kind of think it's quite odd that the N4 is kind of finding a middle ground when I would think of the Johnsbo N4 really as the Johnsbo 2.5 because it seems to live between the Johnsbo N2 and the N3 in a number of different ways in terms of scalable storage and indeed physical presence. Next up, let's talk about ventilation because the Johnsbo N4 once again seems to find this middle ground between the N2 and the N3 because it has an absolute shed ton of ventilation. It's got ventilation panels on the side, a ventilation panel on the top, the removable front panel. And when you look at say the Johnsbo N2, they actually remove uh, the N3, they removed a lot of that ventilation. And in favor of that, they instead changed the system to actually adopt uh, the option of attaching two 80 millimeter fans there, which were an optional purchase, and the two cooling fans there on the base. Whereas when we look at the, John, the new John Pro N4, uh, we can see that not only does it now have a single fan rather than the two fans there at 120 millimeters, but they've gotten a, they've removed the option of adding those two additional fans that are on the top, but instead favoring much more that passive ventilation all the way around. Not unlike what we saw on the John Pro N2 when that was released. Ultimately it is finding that middle ground between those two systems utilizing the single fan and more passive ventilation afforded to the John's Bow N2 but also some of the scaling afforded to the John's Bow N3. Now you're going to have different feelings about whether that is a good or a bad thing because some of you prefer passive ventilation uh, you know due to its uh, in decrease in noise and an over you know uh, a heightened reliance on the CPU fan cooler there doing a lot of the ventilation all the way through the box. 
but there's going to be other other users who aren't going to be in close proximity that actually prefer the likes of the Johnspo N3s, more um, active cooling system running all the way through, and also scalable ventilation there to create that horizontal cooling system for air. It's not necessarily a bad thing in the case of the Johnspo N4, just a very surprising choice during its hardware development that rather than scaling up on the Johnspo N3, it actually scaled that cooling system back to live somewhere between the two and the three. Finally, we can talk about ports and connections, because although you're going to be largely governed by the ports and connections afforded to the motherboard that you opt for, it has to be said that the case does still have that F panel, the front panel, with ports and connections included. And in the case of the N4, it arrives with a USB Type A and a USB Type C port. Now, it's conflicting information about what the uh, performance of that is going to be, I believe. It is going to be uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabit. But when I go into the, U the ports and connections here, we can see that they're listing it as just standard USB 3. Now, again, the motherboard that you connect it into and the F panel connections you choose to use are going to make all the difference. But I, when I was testing uh, the John's Row in 3, I got better performance than traditional USB 3. Now, I will argue that when it comes to the John's Bow N3, there is still something there that's missing from the new N4. And that is that... Uh, sound um, the audio in and out socket something that was afforded to the Johnspo N2 as you can see there with the audio in and out and the N3 but now it is absent there on the Johnspo N4 have you noticed something else that's missing from the Johnspo N4 at least at a casual glance the LED lights the LED lights that I really did praise on the N3 there for each of the individual drives that are being fed from LED strips from that back plane are absent here now we don't know for certain that if we were to open up the john spoke n4 and you better believe it as soon as it's available to buy we'll have one here on the channel but we still don't know for certain whether there are going to be led lights afforded to here i can't really see them here and i'd like to assume leds would be present and visible when we go into the specifications of course we can see a little bit further information about the architecture and build but overall i think that's a weird step back from them i'm not suggesting that john pro m4 is in any way a bad case because it is good that john Power is now entertaining m80x um a uh, uh, motherboard inside there and scaling up for the pci connectivity but there's definitely some odd choices being made here in terms of the overall hardware architecture the rest of it is pretty much what you'd predict much like its predecessor it's taken advantage of sfx uh, psus to go inside slightly different sizing there and it is utilizing a direct access pa panel at the rear so unlike the john spo n3 which utilized that slightly quasi odd extension cable inside the psu actually feeds directly into that back panel and is a removable back panel there with channels to allow all of the power connectors into the mobo at the top but ultimately that's really everything we know about the john's boat n4 and how it compares against the two and the three and we're going to go into a much more in-depth analysis later on when we've got all three cases here in the studio but that's really about it we've already made an article here over on nas compares breaking down a lot of what we already know about this case and updated it and we're working on a comparison between these three cases to help you understand which is the best for your needs going quite deep into each of the individual components listed on their site so i recommend you check that out linked in the description below there's obviously other articles and guides that we've worked on within the last few weeks on the subject of diy nas and we've been talking about some of the mobos uh, recently as well as recommending some of the cases on amazon aliexpress and other sites out there so you can check that out they'll be linked in the description but other than that thank you so much for watching have yourselves a fantastic week and i'll see you next time